this is a terrible way to start a vlog. But anyway, it's what what I'm doing. So hello, it is Meredith and today I'm starting the Peace Talks for Realmathon reading vlog. Why do I always say things so convolutedly? There is a Peace Talks 48 hour readathon for the Realmathon readathon and I am vlogging it. Does that make any sense? So this is 48 hours where you get an extra 10 points for every book you read for your realm. I'll link all the information for Realmathon. If you don't know what it is, it's just a readathon where there's four realms and we're all battling it out to be the last realm standing. Points are averaged out, so it's just about getting as many points as you can. You can also attack other realms. So yeah, I'm on the romance team, so you get extra points for reading romance. You get extra points for reading, like, fantasy romance, hybrid genre romance. So my plan for this Peace Talks is to read a lot of short stuff because I am working every day of this. Sunday, not as much, so I'm going to try and just bust out maybe some other stuff on Sunday, but um, today and tomorrow I'm working. Now, Peace Talks doesn't start till like evening, so it's morning right now, so I haven't started. I'm going to start with a manga on my break at work. I'm going to read Boys Run the Riot Volume 2. I read the first one for Trans Right Readathon. I gave it five stars. I really enjoyed it, so I'll talk about that after I finish it. I also plan tomorrow to read Saga Volume 1 and 2. I've never read Saga. My friend lent me these, and I'm seeing her tomorrow, so I thought I'll get these busted out in the morning before I see her. I have been saving them for Peace Talks, and I'm like, may as well try and get them done tomorrow morning so I can give them back. So I'll talk about these after I've read them. What else do I have planned? That's helpful. Maybe I'll bust out an Ice Planet Barbarians because they're always really quick. Just short stuff. Yeah, I think that's all I have to say. So I'm going to fuck off now. So yeah, it hasn't actually started yet. I'm doing some editing and then we'll go from there. This is a terrible start of a vlog. I don't like clickbait you know i like to let you guys know straight away that this is going to be absolute horseshit and then you can choose to leave if you so wish you know i'm not gonna i'm not gonna make you guys think this is gonna be quality content because it's not so this car on our street the last few days just keeps beeping like someone's having a rough go in life because they're just like me 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 like every day the last few days and they keep going like beep, 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 beep. and i don't know why but my head just goes beep, 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 beep. Ree, ree. does anyone know that song i can't even think of what it's called what even is that song i don't know this is all this is all that's going through my head that car horn and then that the start of that song you probably didn't need to know that. I'm wondering what goes through my head. That, that's kind of it. Looking like a potato, great. So, hello. It is the, it's the 15th here at 10 a.m. So my peace talks have been going for quite a while now. I started 6 p.m. yesterday because I started reading on my break at work and I've read six things. <laughs> I read Boys Run the Riot volume two. I really enjoyed this one as well. I think I'm gonna give it a four stars. I didn't love it as much as the first one. It wasn't quite as wholesome, but it was still really fun. I can't remember if I said what this was about, but it's about a group of teenagers who are trying to create a clothing company. It covers a lot of other topics. It's a found family kind of story because they all like have like trauma or things going on and that brings them together. And this is kind of their like passion project. And the main character is trans and the author is trans which is really great i can't speak for how the rep actually is as someone reading it who isn't trans i like that it's very nuanced and covering a lot of different things the struggles with being trans the way that people treat trans people but also how it makes you feel so i feel like this could almost be triggering for trans people so just keep that in mind the main character really does struggle with self-worth because of people not validating who they are but overall the story is about loving yourself and learning that people can fuck off finding people that love you for who you are accept you for who you are and respect boundaries respect your body respect your identity so it is like this story that covers a whole range of what it's like to be trans again i cannot speak if it's done well or not so yeah i read that and then i binged five volumes of failed princess 
I don't know what happens, but after work I just stayed up till like 2. This is what happens when I read manga. Okay, I just get addicted and I binge it. We saw it with Blue Flag, we're seeing it with Failed Princesses. It's an issue. See, so yeah, I read the last five volumes, this is a six volume series, and I'd, I read volume one like last year and I really liked it, even though like, well, had some issues. So this is a Yuri manga, which means female, female, and it is a high school romance. And it's not weird and fetishizing it, it's like cute. And it's like angsty and like, Oh, it's so good. So it's about these two girls. So one's kind of like the geeky girl that gets bullied and one is like the really pretty girl that gets bullied. And she's actually like, she's not a celebrity, but she is like very popular on like Instagram and she sometimes gets like modeling deals and stuff. Yes, she's in high school. It's kind of weird. But anyway, like she's very, very beautiful and respected for that. But she's actually kind of a bitch. She kind of is nasty to this girl. And then the not popular girl sees her getting, confronting her boyfriend for cheating on her. And when she's upset, the other girl comforts her and they end up becoming friends. And the other girl's like, I'm going to make you pretty. So it's kind of like icky in that way because it's kind of promoting that you need to be pretty to be worthy. It's kind of like not the best morals. That kind of gets dropped towards the end, but it never really gets addressed. But sometimes you just like things that aren't the best. You know what I mean? So I'm like, yes, this message is kind of shitty, but it is this emotional character development story of people forgiving one another and making up for the past and like beautiful friendship turning into romance and it's so angsty and like one is like so in love with the other like the other takes a little bit longer but one is like so head over heels and i just like her jealousy her angst and i love seeing like an angry jealous girl over another girl i'm just like oh my god my emotions! My emotions! I was obsessed. I had to read to the end to see what was going to happen. So this has probably taken over Blue Flag as like my favorite queer manga because the ending in this is actually good. <laughs> I loved it and I kind of want to buy them all now and just reread it because it was so beautiful and the art is lovely. And I just love bitchy mean girls becoming better people. It's just like my thing. So Boys Run the Riot got me 27 points. This is including the extra 10 points. And then the Failed Princesses books got me 110 points, which is including all of them getting me an extra 10 points. So I got an extra 60 points just for each book. Yeah, 137 points so far for Peace Talks. So not bad. So now I have two and a half hours to read these. I don't know if that's going to happen. Although looking at this, there's not actually a lot of writing because sometimes comics have a lot of writing. These are not too bad. I'm going to make myself a coffee. I'm going to have a bit of breakfast and I'm going to snuggle down and try and smash volume one and two of Saga out so I can give them back to my friend. And we're getting sushi trained. So I'm super excited. <laughs> to read both with plenty of time left but I then <laughs> realized that Liam might like these so I gave him the first volume and he wants to read the second but he does not have time to read it so I put in all that effort for nothing but it's fine. I really enjoyed this. I'm giving the first one four stars, the second five. I really enjoyed this. It's a I guess you'd call it like a sci-fi it's um, set on like a bunch of different planets and there's kind of these two major races that are kind of at war, they're colonizing a lot of planets and the two races basically do not get along, they hit each other, they're fighting basically. There's a huge war going on and two characters from those races, one of each, fall in love and have a baby so it's kind of this adventure story it's being told by the baby um obviously the, the child in the future is probably an adult kind of thing not the, the baby's telling story you know what i mean so yeah these first two volumes were so fun um there's a lot of like villains and it kind of reminds me of um like umbrella academy where the villains often have a lot of human reasons behind what they're doing and they have really like respectable qualities and it's kind of like they're just doing their job to get paid to to you know do these things rather than like the evil masterminds but obviously like 
there's a bit of humanity lost in the fact that they're doing these things but they also have like human reasons so it's this awkward like they're evil but they're also like not super evil it's a really cool experience i really like that and obviously these two adorable i love them and their baby and all the characters they meet along the way there's lots of like wholesome relationships people they meet along the way that help them protect them there's lots of cool artwork lots of boobs lots of massive testicles so yeah i think if you've been wanting to pick this up it is so good i i think it's as good as people say i really really had a good time they're such easy quick reads and like they'll be fighting and like trying to escape and there'll be all these like massive scenes and then like they'll just be like a wholesome scene when like the baby like giggles or something and it's just like and they're talking about how their baby is like a symbol of hope because they don't want the fighting to continue they want the war to end so there's so many like layers to this as well as just this like cute wholesome like romance between these two characters and their child but yeah it's super great i'm absolutely loving it i just want to like binge the whole thing now okay i'm now gonna eat a shit ton of sushi So Liam said he's not going to make fun of me during the filming of this clip. We'll see if he can manage to actually stick to that. Okay, so peace talks have finished. It's been quite a few days. Just completely forgot to film a wrap up. And I've decided to do it while I look awful. Nothing new, nothing changed. Same old shit. Same old fucking shit. So I ended up finishing seven more things, I think, since I last updated you. So I did finish Barbarian's Touch and I did that as an attack book just because there's like some prompts on the attack that work really well for Ice Planet Barbarians. So I did decide to attack. It was like minus 60 points and that was at Sanctum. My prediction is Sanctum will win. So I like to attack them, but I'm starting to feel like Ilma's gonna win now. I basically never think it's gonna be us or Enya, basically. So I feel like Ilma or Sanctum are going to win. Um, but anyway, yes. So I read Barbarian's Touch. So this is book number eight. I have no idea. There's so many. So in the last book, some more human girls were found. So basically the story of Us Planet Barbarians is that this spaceship of women crash on this planet and they had been abducted by these evil aliens and then they crash on the ice planet where the barbarian alien men are really nice. The women need to get this like parasite in them to be able to you know stand the conditions of the planet and when they get that they often mate with one of the barbarian men which is where they get like basically super horny and it's a way to help them like procreate basically. It's very fucking weird. Don't ask me why I've read like eight of these it's honestly a very low moment in my life. So this one was, yes, they went and found these other girls. There's sisters and we're following the sister that is actually deaf. Um, and so she's really struggling because she can't communicate with anyone except her sister through sign language because her sister knows sign language to communicate with her. But she cannot read the lips of these barbarian men. One of the barbarians decides that he's going to mate with her. So he steals her and holds her up in a cave for like, a few nights, I can't remember how long. And then this other barbarian that's super nice and believes that they're gonna meet, saves her and she likes him and she resonates with him, which is the mating. Um, and so it's just basically them fucking in a cave. So yeah, not much happens. Obviously there's the communication thing, which made it a little bit more unique than others. Um, I didn't mind this one. I think I gave it four stars. It's definitely one of the better ones. It was definitely built on like trust and love and it was really sweet and delightful and adorable. And there was like that layer of him wanting to like help her and protect her. Um, and you know, it was really interesting exploring her because you know, she felt guilty and that she couldn't really do anything. She was very vulnerable in this situation, which I think would be really hard. Um, especially because she is quite headstrong and independent and wants to like 
do things herself but she has to rely on other people because she you know is unable to communicate here i'm not deaf so i cannot speak on their representation i don't know if it's done well it was like one of the better ones in the series so yes but i feel like they could have been more smart honestly like I feel like there was a lot of build up in this one, but the build up wasn't that interesting because I mean, it's really hard to make these interesting with the build up if they're already like resonating because it's kind of just like boring after that. Cause it's like, okay, so like they're gonna end up together and like have sex because it's like preordained, you know what I mean? So it's just like, can we just get onto the interesting weird sexy times? So then I binged another manga series. There's seven volumes published in English and I read six volumes. So this was My Love Makes Up, which is a, another queer manga, shoujo slice of life. So it's about this guy in class and he has a crush on this chick that sits next to him. And then there's a guy that sits in front of him and he borrows the eraser from the chick next to him. And he actually sees that she's written on the eraser and it's actually got the name of the guy sitting in front of him with a love heart on it. So he's like, oh, so she has a crush on him. And he drops the eraser and the guy in front of him picks it up and he's like, why the fuck <laughs> is my name written on your eraser with a love heart? He's like, what the hell? And the main character's too nice to be like, it's her eraser. So he basically is like, yeah, I'm in love with you. Um, <laughs> and then of course they actually do start to fall in love with each other. And it's super cute. And this is one of those series um, if you haven't read like shoujo romance manga, a lot of the time they don't get together till the end um, and then it ends. And I really enjoy that. But sometimes they do get together during the series um, and sometimes quite early on. And the series is more about exploring their relationship rather than them getting together. And so this is one of those ones where they get together kind of early. So just go in knowing that this isn't one where it's like very angsty of them trying to get together. It's them trying to figure out a relationship um, and navigating their sexuality, their feelings. Um, and it's super cute. It's very more like slice of life humor, comedy rather than like an angsty romance, but it's still super cute. So yeah, I was a little bit obsessed and just like binged a shit ton of this. And then Peace Talks over because I was gonna read a little bit more and then I went to a friend's and was smothered in dogs. But that's all right. So I calculated my scores. So I only did one attack. So it was minus 60 for Sanctum. And then the rest were all defense. And I got 363. So not bad. I read a lot of great stuff. It's really just fun to read manga because I don't really do it a lot these days. But yeah, that's going to do it for this vlog. Let me know if you participated in the peace talks. How many points you got? Are you participating in Realmathon? What realm are you on? Hopefully you're on team Cyrus because clearly the best team, even though I have like no faith that we're going to win. And yeah, if you're not, let me know if you've read any of the books that I read. What are your thoughts on any of them? And yeah, let's just chat and I will hopefully see you in my next video. But until then, bye. Just letting you know that as soon as I stopped recording, Liam started making fun of me. <laughs> okay, bye.